before I leave for school? Well, where'd you leave your laundry? Down in the hall. You saw it this morning. Oh, good heavens. I thought it was his rock collection. He must have a hundred pounds of stuff in that bag. How'd it get so stiff? Oh, come on. Stop that. Oh, come on, Mom. No, I got all my jeans and sweatshirts and underwear. You know, they get a little raunchy and so forth in the normal course of things. Well, in the normal course of things, my dear young friend, our dryer is going on the fritz, so you'll have to take care of things yourself. Oh, holy smoke, Mom. I can't go back to school without any clothes. Well, you just march yourself over to the laundromat and read the simple instructions, and you'll have clean clothes to go back to school with, my deprived young man. Look, I don't want to defend a sweaty young procrastinator, honey, but isn't it kind of late in the game to start teaching them to be a laundress? Well, honey, it's really nothing. All you have to do is read the directions, and those raunchy clothes become civilized in no time. But how about a few quarters for the machine? You know about the machines, then? Yeah, how do you think I hack it down at school? I thought maybe you stayed raunchy. Yeah. Things sure have changed. Can you wash these shirts for me right away? Oh, boy. You washy shirty for me, quickie. Unless you knock off that pigeon English, you wash your own shirts, wise guy. And besides, if you want your shirts washed quickly, you don't bring them to a Chinese laundry. You do them yourself the best way you can. Yeah, but I don't have any more shirts. What am I going to do? Yeah. If your circumstances allow you the customary five days to have your shirts laundered properly, we can proceed with this transaction. Honey, when you finish breakfast, would you go to the supermarket for me? Sure. Before it gets too crowded, so you can get in and out in a hurry. Okay. Here's left. I want some meat. Right. And some tomatoes and cucumber. And some stuff for salad. And some frozen peas and carrots. Yeah, what kind of meat do you want? Uh, about two and a half pounds of brisket of beef. Right. Okay? Yeah. And you better get some broccoli, too. Okay. Here. Mr. Muller? Mr. Muller, my wife sent me to get some firm, ripe tomatoes for salad. So? So which are the firm and ripe ones? You got eyes. You got hands. So look and feel and... Maybe you'll find some tomatoes that will please your wife. Well, you don't suppose you could help me, do you? I mean, I don't want to have to bring them back if they're not firm and ripe. If you'll allow me to finish discussing the merits of this chicken with this charming lady, I'll be right with you, and I'll help you with your tomatoes and the rest of your list. You're not in a tremendous hurry, I presume. Oh, no, no. No, no rush, Mr. Muller. Just take your turn. Take your turn. For what city, please? I'm calling for the number of Camp Overlook, and it's pretty close to Overlook Falls, Ohio. One moment, please. The number for Camp Overlook is 555-2368. Would you make a note of that number for future use, please? Yes, I will. Thanks very much.
This is Harvey Herrick calling. I will be arriving on the bus that gets at 502 today at Overlook Falls. Could you please have one of the counselors there to pick me up? Fine, Harvey. Several of the boys are going to be on that same bus, and we'll have a counselor there to pick you up. Does your family know you called to confirm? Oh, yeah. They're sitting here right with me. Very good, Harvey. We'll see you around 5 o'clock, then. Take care of yourself. Thanks very much. See you later. Oh. Uh, would you consider it an intrusion on your very, very busy schedule if I presume to ask what it was you just did? I called Camp Overlook to confirm my arrival, Dad. Why? Oh, listen, no offense, old man. No offense. But that was kind of a long-distance call, wasn't it? Now, don't you think either Mom or myself mm -hmm. should have placed the call? And that is, if a long-distance call was indeed absolutely necessary. Are you serious? This is Saturday morning, right? Well, it uh, started out that way, yes. Well, out of state long-distance rates are very low during this time. And if you dial direct to over the falls, you actually save money by getting the dial direct discount. And by me calling them and having them meet me, I saved the money I would have to spend on that beat-up old cab from over the falls to the camp. Very simple. Really. Harvey, how did you learn to dial all those numbers and to get long-distance information that way? Mom, it's right here in the front of the book. It's like you told Michael. Just read the directions and there's nothing to it. Well, I gotta hustle on and pack my gear. I'll see y'all later. Incidentally, if you want to learn how to dial direct, it's right in the front of the book. Yes, I know you told me. Nothing to it. Yes, I know you told really? me. Really? I know. It's in the front of the book. I know. <laughs> Well, you're out with the shopping list. Could you get this kind of home permanent for us? Sure. Wait a minute. Whoa, young lady, hold it. Sit down. Sit down. Home permanent. For us. Sure, I'm going to give Mom a permanent this afternoon. What? Please sit, please. You are going to give my wife a permanent this afternoon. Here, in this house. Yes, Daddy. You see, Mom's very busy sending Harvey off to camp and Michael off to school, and you've got a dinner dance tonight. I can't spend all afternoon in the beauty parlor, so... I'm going to give her a permit. Oh. Well, in addition, my dear, you are going to escort your mother to the dance tonight. Because I am not taking my wife to a dinner dance with a type of head you're going to leave her with this afternoon. Daddy, I do it for Mom all the time. There's nothing to it, really. All I you have to do is read the directions. directions. It's really it's very, very simple. simple. I know. I know. I know. Boy, what a morning. Do you ever get the impression that the world is changing pretty quickly? That if you sit still too long, somebody will come through and paint you? You know, you live your life, you work hard every day, raise your family. Things kind of just go on. But you know, I've been thinking. If time and money are important to you, then you really have your choice of doing things a certain way that will save you time and stretch your dollars. And if you have plenty of time and money, you still, for the most part, have your choice, I think. It really all depends on you. In my own kitchen this morning, I suddenly realized how my own family has gotten with the real world, without any of us really being aware of the fact that well, that we're doing things in the least bit differently than we used to. For instance, my wife sends me to the supermarket to pick out things like well, meat and vegetables and salad greens. Do you realize what a mess I would have made out of things if we didn't have a supermarket? Huh? <laughs> Just take a look at that list. That used to be an all-day shopping expedition for a home economics expert. Today, it's nothing. Here's a perfect example why. My wife says, get a two and a half pound brisket. Fine. I get her a two and a half pound brisket. Now, it's going to be right here in this meat counter. It's going to be packaged, labeled, and the price is going to be right on it. Chances are I'll come home exactly with what she wanted. That goes for the frozen vegetables, the salad greens, the fruit, cake mixes. Now, you might call this what? 
semi-automation, modern efficiency, call it whatever you like. But it does keep the prices down, and it saves an awful lot of time. On the other hand, if you'd like some conversation, some leisurely shopping, I guess you could go to a smaller grocery store, tell the man exactly what you want. So you do have a choice, you know? It all depends on you and what you want. You know, it's like that with a lot of things. Say, do you know what just struck me? A perfect example about the luxury of time or personal service and what a difference it makes in the cost of things. Would you roll up that window, please? This is something, isn't it? Look at all this stuff. In two minutes, I'll be out of here, and my car will be as clean as it's been in several weeks. Hey, you remember how we used to get our cars washed? We all had some favorite guy, some gas station or some spot, and, and we'd mosey over there every Saturday afternoon, make a social event out of getting our cars washed. And we all thought that that guy was doing an extra special job for us. We all really believed he was giving us some extra special service or attention. And I'm sure it's all true, but where are you going to find fellows like that today? And if you did find them, where are you going to find enough money to pay them? Well, we've all got our little favorite indulgences. You know, I've got a guy down at the office. Well, I don't think he makes more than I do. I know he's busier than the Dickens. And yet his favorite indulgence in the world, I guess, is to go to the barber shop, get himself an old-fashioned barber shave. You know what I mean, the hot towels, the comfortable barber chair that leans back, the half-dozed conversation about the baseball game, and then the aftershave talc, the massage, the whole team. Remember when someone told you you had a long-distance call? You'd practically collapse because you were sure it was some disaster. After all, nobody would think of using long-distance unless it was something of real importance. Today, if you got to get something done, the boss says, pick up the phone, call them. But for the most part, Long distance is really very, very darned inexpensive, especially if you know how to dial direct. Then the discount is even greater than it is at other times. Of course, now, when the operator's involved, you know, when, when you're making a credit card call, or if you're going to call collect, or, or if you're calling it a coin phone, well, then it costs more. But it's like everything else. If you want to hear the familiar voice of the operator and let her do the dialing for you, then you're gonna pay more for the services. I guess it really all depends on you. Well, there's no question about it. It really all depends on you. Look, it's like so many things in our everyday life. You shoot up to the airport and it's nice and pleasant to hand your keys to the valet, talk about the weather a little bit, and just amble into the airport nice and leisurely. On the other hand, if you're like most people, you pull into the airport or any parking lot grab the ticket out of the machine, park and lock your own car. And the chances are you save yourself some money and some time, too. You know, I was at a sales meeting a couple of weeks ago. We stayed at a very nice motel. But we were having kind of a long conference in our room, and we needed a little ice water because we had been talking so much. Wow, if it cost that much in yeah. the beginning, that's what it's going to cost all the way. Yeah. Uh, so hey, uh, Jack, is there any more ice water in this picture over there? No. Wait a minute, I'll give us some more. Now, Jack, will you please just sit down? So let me have that phone, will you? Sure. Hello, room service. Yeah, 118. Could you send us a bucket of ice and how about some nice fresh glasses too, will you? Okay, thanks. And uh, Hancock there. <laughs> Thank you. Sir. Okay, thanks. Joe? Joe? Would you mind if I gave you a little exercise in corporate frugality? Well, if you're talking about that 250000 no. that we included... <laughs> Nothing that important. Joe, if you would follow me about 14 steps. Well, okay, uh, but how am I supposed to know the machine is here? Joe, how did you know you needed $250,000 for sales expenses? Well, you know, it's a funny thing about some people. I guess they kind of like the human element, no matter what it is they're doing. But I was thinking this morning when I was watching my kid dial long distance, 
What if he had dialed wrong? I'm sure he would have known enough to call the operator, tell her that he made a mistake, and he wouldn't be charged for the call. But I think a lot of people envisioned some, I don't know, horrible catastrophe, I guess, if they dial wrong. For instance, just imagine if you're a kind of timid soul and you're dialing long distance direct to a town nearby, okay? <laughs> Hello. Aunt Martha? Do I sound like your Aunt Martha? Oh, dear me. Is, is this 514-2817? On that point, friend, you're a little closer to the mark. That's the correct number. But you're not Aunt Martha. Oh, you're making progress. Please, sir, don't make jokes. I dialed long distance. May I ask from where you are calling as you pursue your search of Aunt Martha? I am calling from Grand Rapids, Michigan. Isn't this Chicago? I would say you have a little cause for concern, sir. This is not Chicago. This is Burbank, California. Welcome to beautiful downtown Burbank. Welcome to beautiful downtown Burbank. <laughs> okay, so the poor soul made a mistake. Look, the telephone company encourages people to dial long distance direct. That's why they give you discounts when you dial long distance yourself. But they know that people are only human and that sometimes people make mistakes. So what happens if you dial the wrong number when you're dialing long distance direct? You simply dial the operator, you tell her you made a mistake, and the call is credited. And that's the end of it. So I think that alert people, people that are kind of with the real world as it exists today, well, have learned that with a little common sense, you can stretch your dollars a little farther and save yourself a lot of time and a lot of aggravation. As my wife and daughter keep saying to me, all you have to do is read the directions. So we know enough that we place our long distance calls after five o'clock in the evening or all day Saturday and Sunday until five. The telephone company makes the dial-it-yourself discounts even greater when you call at those times. So why not do it? Just think of the money and the ingenuity and the human energy that have gone into creating some of these things that are designed to simplify things and make life a little bit more efficient these days. Hey, I could use a cup of coffee. How about you? I'll go in and get us some. Hey, what happened? Sudden shower. It'll be clear soon. You ever stop to think? You dial a number in your own home, and somehow, automatically, you can reach anywhere in North America, and even many parts of the world. What a world we live in. Dial it yourself long distance discounts. For anybody who has the common sense to look in front of the phone book, find out how it's done. It all depends on you.